Hey guys, what's up? It's NK Plays here, and today I'm going to be reviewing a game that I recently purchased for the Nintendo Switch, known as The World Ends With You Final Remix. I don't know how I can explain this game other than just saying how amazing it is. So don't expect me to be a true critic and going into this saying, well here's this tiny little nitpick and also it's not COD so it's bad. Um, none of that. I'm going to be judging the game in my perspective, how I felt about it, how I spent my time with it. And um, yeah, uh, first thing I want to point out is that I'm really reviewing the game as a whole, so it really, most of these points stand for the Switch, iOS, and DS version. They're all very similar with few differences in between them. Uh, they're just ports with additional content. But um, yeah, other than that, uh, let's get right into this. So uh, right away, you can obviously tell from the visual style and the characters that the this game is, it looks great, it looks fantastic. Every character has, you know, their own interesting design. Neku has his headphones, you know, Shiki has her her stuffed animal. Uh, Rhyme and Beat have that skull thing going on, and Joshua, you know, he's Joshua, he's great. Um, e each character just, you know, rep they really do represent the kind of person they are. Um, so, uh, Shiki, you know, you can tell that she has a lot of different types of clothing articles because she wants to be a designer. She has uh, all these different things about her. She has, again, the stuffed animal that she does use in combat. Uh, you have Beat and Rhyme who have the skull theme going on, kind of representing a bit of rebellion, which, you know, is definitely a part of their character arcs. Uh, Neku has his headphones, you know, he's always blocking out the world. And Joshua is just normal and average, just so, like he, he wants himself to be like he wants himself to seem to be. Each character looks like their personality. Like you could look at them and you could pretty much tell the kind of person they are. And you can say that's a good or a bad thing, but in my opinion, I think being able to tell a lot about the character from their style is very important. Uh, next, uh, about the story. You have seven days to defeat the Noise and the Reapers because you're in the Reapers game you died, and you've been given a second chance at life. If you defeat the Reapers, you beat their game, you get a second chance at life, and you get to come back. I, other than just flawless, that's pretty much the only word I can use to describe the story. You, you wake up as Neku in Shibuya, and other than your name, you know nothing. He lost his memory, he doesn't know what to do. You get attacked by some frogs, and Shiki shows up and says, Hey, we need to make a pact if we want to survive. She explains everything, and you go from there. You go around meeting characters like Beat and Rhyme. Um, you meet the other players of the game. Uh, you learn the stakes that are at hand. You know, your life is on the line. If you die, you get erased. You are gone from existence. All these things going on. You get to know a bit of the insight on the Reapers. Uh, there's Mr. Hanakoma. There's just there's so many different parts of this and then then you meet Joshua He's another one of your partners, you know uh, He has his own style of combat. He's I, I, I can't I don't want to go too into depth about it Because of just how great the story is. I just I don't want to spoil it for anyone So if just letting you know like skip to the part that's on the screen now if you want to skip over the story bits so uh, if I spoil anything, I'm sorry, but that's, I just, I have to talk about it, so, you know, Neku, he's really, like, his type of person is that he doesn't like other people, he just wants to be his own person and stay away from everyone else, he doesn't like other people, suddenly he's forced into this game, and he's with Shiki, Shiki has to stay with him, because if you don't have a partner, you don't have a, you don't have a chance of survival. 
Sorry about the dog in the background. Um, where was I? Then there's, again, Beat and Rhyme. They have their own rebellious thing going on. They're just two other players trying to survive in the game. And uh, without saying too much, you do end up partnering with Beat later. Um, you know, in your second week, you part up, partner up with Joshua, who has this very mysterious thing going on about him. Um, you have no idea how you died in the first place as Neku. You don't know why you're there. Like, you know, um, Shiki got into a car accident. Beat and Rhyme, I think, also got into a car accident. I'm not sure, but I know that um, uh, Beat went away from his home or something, and Rhyme went after him, and then she was almost hit, and then he jumped in front of her, and yeah. So ever, all the players in the game, that you meet other players too. You meet people who just want to help. They just want to... They just want to play the game. You have the ability to have, see the inside of people's minds. It's it's really just a well-crafted story. And if any video game is ever made into an anime, this needs to be the one. I think the only other game that stands any chance of being a good anime is probably Smash Bros. But they would come up, to, they'd have to come up with their own unique story for that, or like Zelda or Kid Icarus or something. But but this game. This game, you could just copy and paste the story over, make each day an episode, and boom, you have a perfect story right there. It honestly is just, it's incredibly made, and honestly, you, you just need to play the game for yourself, or at least watch someone play the game, because it's honestly just amazing. Uh, next, we'll talk about the gameplay. You play the game in two, one of two ways. Uh, you can either play with... Um, in handheld mode, where you know you're swiping and tapping, holding different parts of the screen, enemies, Neku himself, to make shields, do attacks, uh, summon your partner, and when you when you do that enough, and if you co do combos with your partner, uh, you can do this like super move, where once the gauge builds it to 100%, you do one of three things. With Shiki, uh, you have to tap the cards to match the symbols. When you're with uh, Joshua, you have to do the numbers in the correct order, and when you do it with beat, you have to uh, remove a card to make a pair of two next to each other. Each character has their own style and own way to summon them, and I think that's very aw like it's awesome. There's just so much care put into this game. Uh, so yeah, so well, let's move on. Um, next, I want to talk about docked mode. It's really not that bad. I've just been playing in dock mode for like the past two hours or so, and it's not as bad as everyone says it is. People are making it out to be uncontrollable and and just not fun, but it's really not that. It's more like, it's not how the game was intended to be played. Ever since the DS, you've been playing with the stylus or on the phone, you've been playing with your finger. On the Switch, you play with your finger or you play with a pointer Joy-Con because really, if they were to make it so you could use the Joy-Con controls, it just wouldn't be the same game anymore and that's not the kind of way they want to go for it. They wanted to keep the gameplay as similar as they could and honestly, if you're going to get this game, play it in handheld. That's how it was intended to be played. Even so, you just need practice with dock mode to get good at it. It's just a lot of memorizing the pins that you collect, uh, which I will get into later, but it's memorizing their attack patterns of enemies, and it's just, it's, it takes time to get used to. That's, that's really the point I'm trying to make here. It's not as difficult or unplayable as everyone makes it out to be. I already talked about uh, the unique characters, so let, next let's go to my my favorite part of this game, the soundtrack. I, I, I can't explain it in words, so I'm just gonna play a few songs for you to listen to, and just, just please bask in their glory.
said crystal blister When I suck can you so can you some more candy kick Come on get cold and fake it got a high kick Mr. Twist the moist with frizzing Stick it up take it a step aside See the word effect to the fact to the vibe to the mode So now you know why I love the soundtrack so much. These are the kind of songs that I would listen to on a daily basis when I'm not even playing the game because they're just so catchy. They're so fun to listen to. They just the, the they represent the parts of the story so perfectly and they represent the game as a whole so well. And this is I am a sucker for music and games. If your game has a great soundtrack and you have the recipe for a great game. As long as the gameplay is not terrible, then you've got yourself a good game right there. Like, there's like three very important parts to games, and that's the gameplay, um, the soundtrack, and the graphics. The graphics I could care less about. You can have the worst graphics in the world, but if you have a great story and fun gameplay, or if you have a great soundtrack and maybe a story and really fun gameplay, then you have me sold. I will be playing it for hours. Because sound is important. If your game doesn't have good music, then you have no personality in your game, essentially. Because songs can be interpreted in so many different ways and really tell a lot about the kind of game you're playing. And so the last thing I want to talk about is how much content there is in this game. It's The story can be completed in about 15 hours. But after that, the main story is in 15 hours, but then after that, you have like another 5 hours of bonus chapters in the form of a new day with the new Reaper Coco, who I, I actually haven't finished that yet, and I don't need to, to still say that this is an incredible game, and an incredible story. I know that it's an extension of the story, and really ties up a lot of loose ends, but it's it's just, I, I'm talking about the main game here, the, the a new day, and another day are just extra stuff that you don't have to do to beat the game. But yeah, in, in another day, um, you're in an alternate universe where instead of being, you know, how he was before, which I'll, I'll get into his character a little bit later, um, he's very cheery in another day. Uh, I should probably talk about their personalities a little bit. Neku is very antisocial, like I mentioned before. And in another day, um, they're just, they're, he's completely different. He's really into this mini game called Tin Pin Slammer, which is this thing you have to play uh, in the story mode a little bit. It's basically like the Pokemon cards of this world. Um, you know, you use the pins and basically you just try and hit the other pin off the board. It's simple, but there's also like other moves you can use and it's, it's not hard. It's really just a little bit of extra type of gameplay. It's not the main focus, but Otherwise, another day is that, and then a new day is you, for whatever reason, you're brought back into the Reapers game for expert mode, and yeah, other than that, I really don't want to spoil too much, so yeah, just, it's extra content, it's another week in the game that's, it's definitely worth, um, final remix. But the other content is, you know, there's the shopping, you have to go to different parts of Shibuya, and, um, you have to go to different parts of the area you're in, and you have to buy, you can buy pins, you can buy clothing. Uh, the clothing can be used to give yourself extra defense, attack, and health. Um, there's brands, each item has its own brand, or it doesn't have a brand at all. But depending on the area you're in, in the game, your attacks could be weaker or stronger, based on the pin, that based on the brand that's stronger in that area. Um, there's foods, when you buy foods, you can give it to your, um, you can give it to your character, and over time, like based, like if you were to spend, if you were to put a, eat a food item and then play a day in the game, then you would digest that food item, and you would gain 
health to your base uh, base character. When you add clothing, you get extra stuff added on. And then there's also missions. Once you beat the game, you can look through all the chapters and go back to them all the days. And there's new missions that you have to complete. And once you complete them all, you get more, even more content. And there's still this little box in the middle that I have not gotten. Uh, I have no idea what it is, but it's even more content for this game. This game is huge. Even though this main story is only 15 hours, the gameplay is so fun and addictive and the music is just perfect. Everything about this game just screams effort and time and just, it is, if you own a, if you own a DS, get this game on the DS. If you own an iPhone or an Android, which you most likely do, get this game. If you own a Switch, get this game. On the DS, it's probably about $20 now. Its original price was $40. Um, on the on your phone, it's only like $18. It's so cheap and portable and easy, and it's just it's so convenient. And the Switch version is if you really want to keep playing this game. It's $50, but not $60. It is $49.99, but it's definitely worth it for that for some of those extra bits of content like a new day it's just it's so amazing i the price maybe is too high for some people but if you like rpgs if you like good music if you like an incredible story then this is the game for you the only thing this game doesn't have is multiplayer or oh you know what i'm stupid it does have multiplayer in Final Remix, there's a co-op mode now. You can play with two people. You can play as Neku and then his partner, whoever you have at the moment. They added even more to this already amazing game. There's no co-op in the other version, but I was going to say there's no online multiplayer. That's if that's what I was going for. It's not. There's not competitive parts to it because you know it's an RPG. There's not going to be any online multiplayer, but there is co-op now. So I haven't personally tested it out, but I know that. Each character has their own moves, like like Shiki, Joshua, and Beat all have their own moves. You can use them to your advantage. I, I, I'm, I'm rambling at this point. What I'm trying to say is please play this game. You, Everyone has a way to play it. If you own a computer, you can play it on the DS, on a DS emulator. I don't recommend playing it that way because I want you to support the original creator, creators of this game. But if you, have a, if you have to play it that way, then play it that way. Um, it won't be as much fun without a touch screen, but it's still worth playing. And if you have a phone, that's... Most likely the iPhone version of this game is the best way to play it, because you have the updated uh, music, you have updated graphics, and you have a, a few bits of extra content, and you have the easy portability of your phone. And if you want the most content, then you want the Switch version, but it's the highest price. All three of the versions are just, just so incredible. Again, I'm rambling, so I'm going to end this here. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please try this game. It's a 10 out of 10. It's just, it's so, it's so amazing. The World Ends With You is by far one of my favorite games, and I'd recommend it to anyone who has the chance to play it. So, that's all for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to rate, comment, like, and subscribe, and I will see you all. Have a nice day. Peace.